Hey, in this video we'll look at how you can easily make beautiful maps using pretty maps in Python. With pretty maps you can pick any location in the world and create circular maps like this one, or square maps that are centered on a set of coordinates, or you can create maps that follow the boundaries marked in OpenStreetMap, or even maps that have several areas from OpenStreetMap linked together like this. I'll go through a few examples and show you how to adjust the color palette and many other parameters of the maps directly in the code so that you can create maps just as you like them. So let's get started. Pretty Maps is this minimal Python library you can use to draw customized maps from OpenStreetMap uh, created using these libraries. Now, you can use it freely and even make commercial use of it as long as you follow the license and disclose the source code with the license and the copyright notice, as we have over here. You can find it on GitHub, and you can, of course, take the code, run it locally on your computer, but there's also a very handy way of running the code directly on Google Co-Laboratory. And that's what I'll do. So I've taken the demo and changed it around a little bit for this video, and I'm now here in my Pretty Maps Colab notebook, where I can start running these patches of code. There's just a few steps to take, first of all, to initialize everything. We want to run this snippet of code to install the requisite files. And now that's done, the next step is really important, which is to restart the Colab runtime so that these components get to run properly. So we can do that by selecting the runtime menu here and choosing to restart the runtime. It will reload those properly once the initialization is complete. Great, now we can move on to the next block of code, which are the relevant imports, bringing everything from Pretty Maps and the four related libraries. And now we're ready to start creating maps. And what we can do with these maps is generate them here and then save them to the Colab folder structure where we can then download them from. That's what we'll do. The basic map here to look at is a circle plot with a bunch of code we'll dig into. This is all that's needed and the key of course that we want to put in are the coordinates or location that we want to map. So how do we get that? Well you can get that from many places. I can open OpenStreetMap. Let's say I want to map Rome, create a little map of Rome. I can find a suitable place what I had chosen was this here. I can, for example, center the map right there and then grab the geo coordinates from the URL bar in this case. And uh, we'll get something very close to what I already have. If I update this tuple here, latitude and longitude separated by a comma, that's already enough to generate the map. So let's go ahead and do that. And that took about two minutes for me. And what did we get? Aha, this beautiful circular map centered on the coordinates that we provided. Quite large, quite detailed, pretty lovely. Wonderful. So let's look a little bit more deeply at what just happened. At the start here, the plot in uh, matplotlib is defined with the width and height here. So if you wanted to adjust the overall proportions of the width and height of the image, you could do this by adjusting these numbers. And then we entered the coordinates here and just used the radius that I had already selected. So you could select a different radius. And of course, that would govern how zoomed in the map is, what's the radius of the circle shown. So you can easily tweak the radius there. The, the axis that gets defined here is to passed on here, and then we get the all-important set of layers from OpenStreetMap. So what layers are included, and how are they going to be visualized? And there's quite a lot to look at here. For example, for the streets, you choose which ones to show. You mightn't want to show all the kinds of types of roads that uh, OSM has tagged. And then here we have the widths set as well, so you can adjust those freely. There's a number of settings for the different layers, building, water, greenery, forest, and parking. You might want to omit parking. You want, might want to not show forest, for example, remove these, or add something more nuanced for the buildings. 
but mostly you'll probably want to be changing things with the drawing argument. So FC here is the fill color and EC is the edge color. So the background is this kind of beige cream color for the perimeter and the background. And green will refer to this green. Forest will be this darker green here and so on. And you can change those just as you like. So here's one way to adjust your palette is to change the color hex codes right here for any of the layers that you want. And as you can see, the buildings on the map have been colored with a set of three colors, orange, yellow, red, uh, defined here in this palette and basically randomly. It's not going by any kind of building classification. If I were to rerun this code, the coloration of this building would be randomly chosen again and again and again. So you'll get a slightly different variant that time. So you can have a whole different color palette for the buildings, which will really impact the uh, look and feel of a map like this with lots of buildings on it. Okay. And another important thing that you can change, of course, is whether or not there's hatching, any kind of pattern on any of these layers. And what does it look like? Ooh, dot, dot, dot is what we see here, for example. Well, what does that mean? We can look at the hatch style reference from matplotlib to understand that a bit better. And I'll link this in the video notes. But for example, an O, it just means a circle like this. A capital O would be a bigger circle. And you have other options like these forward slashes, backslashes, lines, stars even, and combinations. And as it said, if you repeat the pattern, you will increase the density. So O, 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 dot, 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 will have the O's and the dots in a tighter density. So this is a handy reference. Use that to understand and tweak the uh, look and feel of your maps. You can give those a color as well. And then the Z order, the order in which the layer is drawn is uh, governed by that. So the higher the number, the more on top it will be. So background at the back with minus one with successive layers on top of each other based on the Z order. Finally, as I mentioned, you do want to be crediting the code and the data. And that's what this OSM credit field allows you to do. You can change the color and you can change the positioning of that uh, with this dictionary and so on. And finally, you probably want to save the great map that you've created. And you can do that by running this kind of uh, save fig command where it will then save it down in the Google Colab folder structure, wherever you want. And you can then download it from there, uh, wherever you want. If you want to get it with a higher resolution, you can pass a dots per inch variable for printing and so on. And there's no limit to that. You can get very, very high resolution maps that way. Fantastic. So that's a circular map and a couple of the key things you can adjust. If you wanted to have a square map, what you would want to do is set each of these layers to have a circle as false. Give that a try. Copy that into each of these layers. And we can rerun this code now. And now that the codes run, we see that we have a square map centered on the same location. Fantastic. So we've covered circular maps and square maps. Next, let's look at a map where it's defined by the boundary that you find in OpenStreetMap with a few additional things. So here we'll also have a post-processing layer that puts a little buffer on the perimeter and draws a little boundary around it as well with this step. Otherwise, it's fairly similar to what we had. We've got the figure size defined. And this time, instead of using coordinates, we pick an area that OpenStreetMaps understands. How could we do that? Well, we can jump to OpenStreetMaps. Here's a town not too far from here. And what I could do is look at the old part of town, for example, 
and right click the OpenStreetMap and query the features. So we can see everything that's been kind of well designated and mapped here. And it turns out that there is a boundary defined for this old, old part of the town, old Rauma. So I can grab that here and just type it in. And this will be enough for OpenStreetMaps to understand, oh, that's the place of the world that we're talking about. And we can set a width for this perimeter line and of course set the color for that edge anything and let's see what happens when we run this one maybe with a lesser resolution and let's see what got created this colorful map where instead of a circle or a square we have the map basically defined by the boundaries of that area we saw in OpenStreetMap with this perimeter added and a line drawn on that perimeter with some pretty funky coloration If I wanted that buffer to be closer to the edge, I can make that value smaller. And there's other variables I might want to add as well. If you look at the GitHub repo, you can see some of the parameters that you can pass into the operation. Uh, we've seen radius, we've seen post-processing. You can also do things like rotate the map around, which I want to show you next. You can just pass a float in angles that will rotate the map to what you want to see. So if we want to flip this map upside down, I can just pass rotation 180 and rerun the code. It should be much faster to generate the map the second time around in the same session. Just eight seconds this time. And we get the same map uh, here, 180 degrees rotated. And now we might want to move the uh, accreditation much further to the left by adjusting the x value. Rerun that one more time. And get it over here for now. So that's a bit better. I might want to adjust the colors of this map, but that's how it goes. And then for the final example in this video, I wanted to show you how to set multiple locations next to each other. So the basics are very much the same, same logic, except there's a for loop that goes through any number of plots that you have adjacent to each other. So you could pick these places from OpenStreetMap following the same process we looked at. You go to the area on the map, you can right click query features and find the name of uh, whatever is the uh, thing you want to, the area you want to map and type that in. And here we're defining the building palette for each of these in this places array. And you can see that it's going to pass the palette as part of the second component here, so that it's going to color those buildings on the basis of whatever we've defined with the hex codes here. Other than that, it's pretty similar, right? So you've got the same layers for each of these adjacent areas and the background coloration, forest coloration is all going to be the same. The only thing that's changing is the building palette in this example. We can run this just the same as we've done with the other ones. And as a result, we get this map with uh, these three areas all joined together on one map with this boundary perimeter that uh, merges them all, which could be blank, but I've colored it in this way. So there we go. We've looked at pretty maps, covered basic circular maps, square maps, maps that take an area defined in open street maps and draw that, as well as maps that take multiple adjacent plots and put it all on one map. It's pretty easy to adjust key parameters as we've seen. You can change the color palettes, you can change what layers are showing, change the radius, zoom in and out all things like this. So it's really fun to get going and experiment and start making maps, just remembering the attribution as was mentioned at the start. So hope you've enjoyed watching this. Let me know what else you might like to see and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.